How are YouTube? For this Wednesday episode, we're gonna do a top 5. That just means I ran out of ideas. Stay tuned for our top 5 computing efficiency tips after the break. This is 0612TV. Welcome aboard. So, computers. We all have one of those, right? Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes you find that there's certain things you want to do that, you know, just can't be done really efficiently. Maybe certain tasks take a whole lot of clicks to do or a whole lot of keystrokes to do. I can't solve all your problems, but here are five things I do to make my commuting life easier. Number five, install a dock. I know what you're saying. Most of you were probably not like this. Some of you may say, why not just pin the stuff to the taskbar? Hear me out. Take a look at my dock. That's too many items to fit into the taskbar, that's for sure. If I were to pin everything to the taskbar, I would have no space at all for running tasks. And of course, you wouldn't want to do that. In addition, I've always found it easier to actually keep the tasks and, you know, the programs that I may want to run separate. In the past, when I had Windows Vista or even earlier back when I had Windows ME, what I actually did was I had two bars on a desktop and essentially it functions like a dock. It is a bar that pops up whether I'm looking at a desktop or any other screen. It is a bar that pops up no matter where I am, be it on a desktop or you know, with a window up. And it allows me to, with one click of a button, open either programs or even you know, various folders. The advantage of this, of course, is that this is a one-click operation. You don't have to you know, press start and click my computer. You don't have to minimize to the desktop and click my computer. Just move your cursor to the top of the screen, and there it is, one-click access. It might not sound like much, but it is actually a huge time saver, especially when you're doing things like editing video. Anyway, this dock you see is called Object Dock. Number four is fences. There are two kinds of people out there. One, a person with severe OCD who just keeps his desktop really, really clean, and then another type who doesn't have this OCD and in general will probably have a pretty messy desktop. I used to be the impulsive, keep my desktop clear kind of person until I found fences. Now you've actually seen this in a couple of my older videos. Fences are basically just little regions you create on your desktop that you can drag and drop items into. If you wanna move items as a group, you can by just dragging the frame of the fence. What's really cool about this is that you can actually shrink a fence. So if there are things that you wanna keep on your desktop, but you don't want to take up desktop space with, what you can do is put them all into a fence and shrink that fence really tiny. What's even cooler is the fact that you can actually scroll that fence. This means that if you are so inclined, you can actually pack way more items into your desktop than you usually can. What I also really like about fences is that if you double click on empty space, everything just disappears. Mainly I use that when I want to do some screen capture for my videos, but sometimes when you want to get past the clutter, you know, you could do that if you want. So as you can see, how I'm actually, you know, organizing my space is I have my school stuff on one side, I have my YouTube stuff on another side, and then a couple of other fences to just hold other stuff. It's up to you how you want to organize it. You can draw your own fences, you can shape them to any shape you want, you can give them your own titles. So it's very flexible and it's very customizable. It makes things very organized, which is why I think you know, it belongs in this list because it is a boost to efficiency and thus saves time. Number three, the knowledge of keystrokes. Okay, so maybe this isn't really a program, but still, it's something you ought to know. And yes, I'm sure you know all the old classic keystrokes like alternate tab, control C, control X, control V, alternate enter, alternate F4. Yeah, all these sound pretty, you know, well known. But here are five keystrokes that you may not know. Heh. <laughs> It's a top five in the top five. Take that. Number one, Control Shift Escape opens the task manager in one keystroke. For those of you who have been using Control Alternate Delete and then clicking Task Manager, well, that's a way to speed things up. Control Tab allows you to switch between tabs, whether in your browser or in the tab dialog box. Win D minimizes everything and shows you your desktop. Pressing Win D again brings everything back to the same order it was in. Control shift t in your browser reopens the last tab that you closed. And finally, around your Windows Explorer interface, shift right click gives you extra options. For example, if you like me use the command prompt a lot, you can open a command window in a particular folder, 
You can also copy the path to certain files instead of the actual file itself by using copy link location. Some of these you may not be able to use all the time, but perhaps some of them will be able to radically change the way you, you know, interact with your browser or with the Windows Explorer itself. Number two, a custom browser homepage. I have a bad feeling that these are actually getting more and more out of date since nowadays most people actually just start their browser at Google and start from there. But what I have is a homemade dashboard for my browser. It essentially replaces the homepage that you know you normally have in your browser. And what I have is a whole bunch of links to places that I tend to go often. I also stick a Google search box, which I can, you know, get to Google right away. I also have a Wikipedia search box and a YouTube search box. And of course, because this is HTML, you can of course do fancy things like have the time in the top right corner. I also have a couple of widgets in the bottom right corner. So what's cool about this is I can get to most places that I normally go to in a single click. I can also search Google and Wikipedia without having to actually, you know, go to those places. I know most browsers actually now have search built right into the URL bar, but maybe I'm a bit old fashioned in the sense that I do enjoy, you know, my own setup a little bit more. Now, unfortunately, because this is, you know, a self-made thing, it's extremely personalized. I'm not very sure of how to suggest an alternative to you. I believe several sites online actually allow you to create your own customized homepage. One example, of course, being the iGoogle platform at google.com slash IG. However, that platform is about to be shut down. So we are a little bit late on a bandwagon. There should be other sites providing this service. In fact, I will hunt up for some of them and put them in the video description below. Hopefully that would at least give you a starting point to do your further research. And finally, number one on the list is none other than auto hotkey. Now, I believe I've actually covered this some time ago, perhaps years ago in my series called 0612's Find of the Week. In a nutshell, Auto Hotkey is a programming platform. However, it's not really designed for you to write fully fledged programs, even though technically you could if you wanted to. Instead, at its simplest, Auto Hotkey basically allows you to define hotkeys. For example, don't you hate changing your volume in Windows? Either you go down to your taskbar, click the volume icon, and then drag the slider or you have to repeatedly punch a button on your keyboard. I prefer to be able to make both macro and micro adjustments to the volume level without having to do so much. So what I do is this. In my auto hotkey script, basically what I've done is if you hold down the windows button and you scroll your mouse wheel, that changes the volume. In other words, if an ad pops up on a YouTube video and it blasts my ears, I can just bring it down right away without having to fumble with buttons or, you know, going to sliders. I mean, I guess you can just pull the earphones out, but that's no fun. So yeah, that's one. Back in the day when I actually had my wireless keyboard, it didn't actually have, you know, indicators for caps lock or num lock, that sort of stuff. And this means that I have no clue when I have caps lock enabled. So what I've done is I've actually wrote a little script that will continuously check to see if caps lock has been enabled. If it has, a little window is actually popped up in the bottom right corner, which will then tell me that, hey, caps lock is on, stop coding. Once again, this seems like, you know, kind of a minor change, but for something like adjusting volume on the fly, this has proven to be extremely useful. It's a huge, huge time saver. Once again, it's hard for me to, you know, get you started with auto hotkey because at the end of the day, it is a programming language. It is a little bit more complicated than I can just ramble on about in a video. However, the cool thing about auto hotkey is that people have written scripts and put them online that you can just download and use. Once again, this might require a little bit of Googling on your part, but once you get used to the whole auto hotkey thing, it will be extremely convenient. Now, if there is a reasonable demand for me to start doing tutorials on how to code in auto hotkey, I will be more than happy to actually do that. But yeah, right now, my advice for you would be to look for scripts, and there are quite a lot of them online. And there you go, that wraps up this video. So it seems that, you know, according to my recording, I've rambled on for over 20 minutes. Which is why I think this is a good time to leave. But of course, before I do that, let us recap the top 5 items. The first being a dock. The second being fences. The third being knowledge of keystrokes. The fourth being a customized homepage. And the fifth being auto hotkey. I guess in my top 5 list, they do kind of progress in complexity. Which is always, I guess, nice to have. 
But yeah, hopefully these tips have been helpful to you. And with that, let us wrap up this video. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, in particular, what do you think of the top five thing? Do you want me to do more of these? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, if you like this video or you found it helpful, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612TV. But that's it. That's all I have for this episode. Until next time, you are watching 0612TV. It's none other than Auto Hot Keep. Did something just fly past? Okay.